Hello and a warm welcome back to the TNC podcast, your go-to Norwich City listen, along with Radio Norfolk's The Scrimmage. Um, <laughs> well done. I, Good start, I, mate. I feel, I feel well like I'm third wheeling today. Yeah, yeah mate, you are. You're number one, you are. Yeah. You, you, found it, you found him and then I found him. We both found him in the dustbin. <laughs> we so. helped him out. Yeah. But you're the master, oh, don't forget Rob, that. Rob, great to have you back Good on to the see show. You, Good to see you, Good to see you, mate. You get a nice t-shirt. Thank you, appreciate yeah. it. Nice plug straight away. Yeah. On Saturday. Another good performance on Saturday. It was. Um, Rob, it was a It didn't give me one, but anyway. No, sorry. Sort it out. You can have a mug. Thanks. It's been a year since you were last on the pod. And what's what changed? Happened? What's changed? Not a lot, really, no. is it? I'm trying to think where we were this time last year. We were fifth. We were fifth, and Dean Smith yes. was still here just about. Yep. Yes. Okay, so Dean Smith Clinging was... Clinging on. Yes, and then two, and then the fair the year before that, we just about got rid of Farker, aren't we? So this is a bit of a loop, yeah. really, isn't it? We're in, we're, in a, we're, in a, we're in a vicious circle. But yeah, we're, we're sort of where we are. I think, ultimately, most Norwich fans are, 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 you know, think where we should be, really. Mm. But maybe not, I don't know. Chris, uh, uh, so much to chat about today, but I walked out of Carrowhead on Saturday with a feeling of dread, I think, because it, <laughs> it, it, it does feel as if, where is this all going? Yeah, honestly, mate, there's just so, there's so many questions. There's so many questions to ask at so many levels. And you could argue that really um, those fires that we had in the Premier League uh, we were relegated. They, uh, you would argue that those fires have never really been put out. I think. Don't get me wrong. We've we've thrown a blanket on it. We've maybe put half a fire extinguisher on it, but we've never really got rid of the fire, and uh, and it's continued to, to to go. And yeah, I think there's only so much that you know. I guess certain people within the organisation can do. Um, but at the same time, the way in which we're losing games at the minute is unacceptable. You can't be, and we'll go into the Leeds game in depth, obviously, but the way, the way that you just throw away a 2-0 lead, no matter who you're against, Jack, I think it's unacceptable. Mm. I know they had quality players, but 2-0 up, 60 minutes. What was that ridiculous stat that NCFC number shared? It was something like, since 1967, mm. Norwich hadn't lost a game at that point, 2-0 down or something ridiculous. Go and check out on there. Steve's X account. Mm. Um, yeah, really disappointing. Right, well, I think the interesting thing this season has been around sort of fan sentiment because at the start of the season, when we were watching our, our home game against Hull, I thought, you know, this is going to be toxic. And actually, what we found was a really quite jubilant atmosphere and, and things felt good. And that continued for about a month. The form was good. Sergeant was scoring, Barnes was scoring. And since then, it's been downhill hasn't it and, and it did feel as if we were only ever a few games away from it flipping and do you think we're now at a point of kind of no return amongst the fan base I don't think it's the point of no return because Norwich if they win the next two um, that's how quickly football can change and you know lots of people do buy into this never too high never too low attitude that every ex-player we speak to and you guys have them on this podcast will always say that they're mm. always like don't get too up don't get too down so I don't think it's ever you know, a foregone conclusion that everyone wants the manager out or everyone wants to change. But what you just said is dead right. You know, that whole game, the mm. Adam Eder goal, mm. Adam Eder of mm. all people, who, you know, let's be honest, has been much maligned and he was all right on Saturday, but he, he missed an open goal, albeit thank, offside. Thank goodness. Still, yeah. still and, still. A, and a very good one on one as yes, well. Yes, he in did. The first half but worked now. hard, you know, and, and did his job. I don't think he's the biggest one of our problems at all, no. Adam Eder. He scored that goal, which was a massive goal. The whole roof came off. I was down by the bar. Yeah, yeah. You two were there as well. Yeah. It was incredible. What an atmosphere! So you're you're looking at certain people in the director's box going, "There you go, mate. There's your good atmosphere. Mm. When this place is winning, when mm. this place is buzzing, it's not the fans. It's the players we need to, to get it from." So that was great. We had the nice little start, and it all looked good. But yeah. I really felt a, a dagger in the heart, if you like, in a metaphorical way of speaking, at Plymouth. I just thought it was. Rank poor. Mm. I said rank poor, by the way, there. I don't swear, obviously. Um, it was just so bad. Yeah. I mean, you know, you guys have seen it. You had lots of mates who were there, and we were there. And it was just dreadful. And that was the breaking point where I thought, this team is not there at all. It's nowhere near it. Yes, you throw in the fact that Ashley Barnes and Josh Sharon have both been missing for a large part of it. But I think even with them two there, I still think we'd be having problems. Because mm. let's be honest, two good players... But they ain't gonna win you the league on their own, yeah. are they? I don't think we've got up the, off the canvas since that result. No, we haven't, Rob. We I haven't. don't. I really don't. If you if you look at the way 
you know, we've, we've scraped through it. The only anomaly there is, is the Birmingham at home game, yep. obviously. Yep. Um, Which they did do well in. Yeah, they did do well in. But aside from that, it's been sluggish. It's been, you know, cheap goals given away, um, you know, missed some really easy opportunities to, to win games. So, yeah, I think Rob's right. I think, you know, that, that, was, that was the beginning of this huge downturn in mm. form. I think the... The confusing thing I'm, I'm struggling to get my head around, Rob, is, is our defence at the moment. In goal, and I know he won't be playing on Tuesday, Angus, go- uh, Angus Goal, Angus, Angus Gunn, um, one of the best keepers in the division. Guaranteed. Jack Stacey, who I've been really impressed with. Brilliant. On the other side, Yanulis, again, really yeah, impressed. Been good. And I think Duffy and Gibson, actually, despite the criticism, haven't been too bad. Yet, in the past six games, conceded the most goals in the league, and we're in the bottom three in terms of expected goals against I mean what is going wrong defensively because that is clearly our issue at the moment it's the head coach because you nailed what I just said on Canary Call the other day Jay I'm sure you didn't listen and you've come oh, up with that yourself no, no, no. You, don't. you obviously remember that bit <laughs> the sum of its parts that's a good defence yeah. Gunny agreed brilliant goalkeeper we love Gunny yeah. Jack Stacey could be player of the season you knew this has been really good and I think so in the championship he's excellent it's really you know, what's your nickname good. for him Emperor of Greece and all that Emperor business. of Norfolk Emperor of Norfolk whatever Sort of, and you're right. You know Ben Gibson on his own, on his own merits. He hasn't had a great season. Was on the cusp of the England squad. Has been a good player for Norwich in general. Shane Duffy's been all right. You'd say that's a good signing. Yeah. But as a as a as a five, if you like, they've been hopeless. Mm. And it's just so weird because each player is decent. I think Gibson has been lucky to stay in the team. If I'm honest, and I think you know we massively miss Grant Hanley yeah. and. I think Jaden Warner might be kicking his heels a bit. He hasn't had more of a chance Danny after a brilliant performance. And Danny Bart as well. Yeah, hasn't had that opportunity yet. We might we might see something soon. But I think you're right. As, as some of its parts, it's a good defence. But the head coach is the one who's obviously instructing. The head coach is the one doing the drills and doing the tactics. Clearly, whatever he's telling them to do isn't working. Because you're right, that defence is shambolic at the minute. It really is. It's poor. Let's get on to Leeds. Um, a game of two halves has never been more true here. 2 0 up at half time, Chris. Do, I mean, maybe that doesn't tell the whole story because Leeds missed probably four chances they'd expect yeah. to score. So we, we rode our luck, but it was a beautiful goal from Sarah. Oh. Uh, again, showing his quality. Sensational. And, and Duffy rising well as well. So at 2 0, you're expecting, okay. And even after 55, 60 minutes, you're thinking, we, we've, we've nullified Leeds now. And then out of nowhere, three goals. I mean,. Can you, can you try and put into words the, the, the feeling around that? I hate the fact that I'm feeling really negative about this. And I, I'm, I'm on the side of the fence of it was a matter of when and not if Leeds were going to beat us, yep, to be honest agreed. with you. Did you even um, think that at 2-0? Yeah, 2 nil's never a safe scoreline, full stop. Um, but God, we're rolling out the but, cliches but, today. No, it's true. It's true. But it is true. No, it's true. I can see um, why people say that. But it is and, and actually, true. and actually, you know, I've already mentioned it. Adam has a, a good one-on-one chance. He's got enough time to get a shot away and gets tackled. And also, and linked to the Leeds game, of course. And um, we just want to send our best wishes to the Murrell family because obviously, sadly, Geordie passed away. And an impeccably um, honoured 29th minute applause for him. And we'd we'd actually put the ball, it was Duffy again, put the ball in the back of the net after that mm, had just finished. After. I thought, mm. oh, yeah, wouldn't that have been, been good, yeah. amazing for the Merrill family. But so my point is, yeah, we, we absolutely could have, um, we could have been 3-0 up at least. But as you rightly say, Jack, Leeds had, so, I think they were probably the most wasteful side in terms of the first half performance mm. that we've seen at Carrot all season. Um, Norwich. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, but yeah, no, no I, I, but but for me and plenty, and I'm, I know I'm not the only person that thinks this. I'd be interested to get your thoughts, Rob. The turning point of the game, and people might roll their eyes at me, but I stand by it. O'Neill was having the best game of his season, and him and Johnny Rowe, to be fair, had leads on the back foot. It had them thinking what Norwich could do to them. Yep. And as soon as those two boys went off, obviously, firstly with O'Neill. And you bring on Tony Spring, and I, I, I want to be really, really careful with with this, because a lot of I've seen a lot of really outrageous statements about about Spring it, and my opinion is he's inexperienced, mm. and it ain't his fault. Mm, yeah. um, I know a few Derby fans that took him on loan in League One this season, and you know started a few games, didn't start a few games, stops and starts, wasn't ready. Um, and that's and, at League One level well yeah this is my point and so 
you know, I, I feel like it's incredibly harsh to to criticise Spring it, but I think it's totally fair to criticise that Wagner, we, we, we're 2 nil up, and he changes the it changes the personnel, and we fall apart. And people will say, oh yeah, but Chris, um, they were tired. I've had someone say to me already, no. oh, Roe Ro was tired, O'Neill was tired. Seriously, fuck off. I, I just can't hear it. They're professional footballers, they need to be able to play 90 minutes. If they can't play 90 minutes, this is meant to be a fitter and team. They've, and they've, and the, 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 the players you mentioned, Johnny, have been playing for England. Mm. Um, exactly. Which, is, which means he's got match fitness. Yeah. And Anel has, has not, I'm not going to say chilled out, he's still been working hard in training, but he's not been on international exactly. I, I think even if Johnny is tired and Anel in the same bracket, they're better than the options. Absolutely. We have. This 100%. is my point. But that was the moment that it turned. And this isn't just an isolated incident because we had the same thing at Coventry. We bought on Danny Bart um, and we changed the shape and yep. we invited Coventry on. Yep. Um, there was another game, I can't quite remember, forgive me. I'm sure you could probably think of one. But the, even those two games alone, that's, that's six points, isn't it? Well, well I think the, the example I would give was the, the team he started with. If, you, if you're talking about the head coach and yeah. what he's doing against Plymouth, you know, it was clearly mm. wrong. Yeah. Wang was like he'd won a competition, let's yes. be honest, he was kind Still of going on fit. around him. He's nowhere near it, no. you know, he is just nowhere near it. And, you know, I'd love to see him do well, but I think that ship might mm. have sailed and they'll be looking at There's January. There's no but... way we've scouted him. Like, let's well, be honest, I, need, I well, don't want to be too harsh, but. I think the issue here is he, he is essentially a fourth choice striker. Yeah. And you are, you are dipping your toes into a very limited offering when you're saying, would you like to come and be our fourth choice? Yes, yeah, spot on. I love you, mate, but he's come off the bench, he's made one run, and he's and he's practically on his haunches. <laughs> yeah, I don't I, I don't think I don't think he's that bad in terms of he doesn't try. I just think no, but he's, he's just not just fit. Not there. No, he's not fit and he's just not there in terms of Look, dialed in. Huang yeah. wasn't the reason we lost on. No, agree. Agreed. 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 The, the frustration Same as spring it as well. Well the reason the, the reason we lost, and this is where you know, I'm not here to slag the manager off or anything like that, but the reason we lost is from the choices yep. that Wagner made. Yeah, You I agree. nailed it massively with the Anel shout because, you know... And, all, and I think we've got to be clear... Like, it was ridiculous how he was taken off. I yeah. think maybe your, your praise of Onel at times this season, yes. Chris, has so, been, yes. you know, maybe Bordering slightly on, biased. Yeah, and he was in love with him, let's be honest, which is fine because we all love Anel. But for this game, he was impressive. He was really good. Yeah. That was his best game. You know, I'll, I'll speak for I'll, this is the Chris love from Anel. We know, but I'll speak for someone who's you know I've I've got you know I don't take him out on dates and stuff like that. So <laughs> it's all just it's all just I just respect him as a footballer. I thought he was really good, and I'm next to Phil Daly up in the gantry. Chris is commentating with Cootie. I'm, I looked at Phil. I was like, why is he taking the nail off? And yeah. we were like, has he got has he got a knock? Yeah. Yeah, Clearly yeah. not. Great assist for Sarah's Absolutely. goal. Absolutely. And and Chris kept saying, and, and Chris is a great. Um, Kind of yardstick because you, you Chris Gorham, Chris Gorham, the, yeah, the, the one, yeah. the, the, the really, <laughs> the, the great Chris, as in the, with Chris's, not on radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Flipping it. So the great Chris Gorham, he's. I'm listening to his commentary, and he keeps mentioning Nel Hernandez, and he keeps saying that name. And when you listen to it, I know it sounds silly, but when you're watching the game and yeah, listen to a commentary, yeah. Yeah. you hear the commentator. And Chris always says this. He always says, "If I mention someone a lot, I realise how well they've played." Yeah. And Chris and Kutu said, "Oh no, I'm quite surprised at that one." Yeah. So, and isn't that ridiculous that you know even the biggest skeptic or, or critic of Anel would say, "Well, that's been his good game of the season." Yep. Uh, the biggest critic or skeptic would say that. And yet he made he made the Sarah goal. I know, but hang on, sorry, he, he didn't make the Sarah goal. He passed it to Sarah. Sarah. But that's passed. the assist. Hey, absolutely, absolutely. But isn't it ridiculous that then he was pulled off? I don't understand it. I really don't. Um, I'm I'm baffled and I'm concerned that this is a recurring thing. It's not a one-off. Let Let's go slightly bigger picture again. It wasn't spring it that lost us this game. It was defensive issues I think and the most frustrating thing for me Rob I think is is at 2-0 60 minutes on the clock or whatever it was I think Leeds at that point had kind of accepted defeat yeah they were they were really they were kind flat. of yeah they, they were, were passive and they were flat and I think that if we'd have just cruised through that next 10 minutes we, we, we were home and, and, and dry we give them an opportunity even at 2-1 you think Leeds weren't offering much and we just collapse and is that a confidence thing is it mm. a, a lack of kind of ownership of their own jobs what is it it's all those things you're a cricket fan he isn't it's like you're playing cricket and you get three quick wickets that's yeah. what it was they took three quick wickets and we were beaten and that's the end of the game you know because that's how it felt you know you, you, Sam Day I'll give you a shout out Sam he said that to me one of our producers at work you know and he's right you know that's how it felt yeah. and 
Da Daniel Far David Farker, I nearly called him. Daniel Farker, we, we talk about him as well. He did what he did when he was at Norwich. Yeah. He made proactive substitutions. He changed things. Yes, it's got to be mentioned. Look at their bench. Incredible. Incredible bench in the championship. Say, was about so we'll, we'll take that into account. However, you've still got to put them in, in the right places. You've still got to put them in you know, and make them effective substitutions. And they were. Mm. They were tremendous. Yes, they're good players he was bringing on. And he had other options. He's got Luke Ayling on the bench, for goodness sake. He's, mm. he's, the, you know, he's the captain and what yeah. have you. But he made changes. He, he recognised the problems and he corrected them. And he asked questions of Norwich and we couldn't answer them. End of game. I, I think Rob raises a good point there, and, and maybe to you know do light and shade a little bit here. We we do have to appreciate that Leeds. Uh, I still believe that Leicester will win the league. I think Leeds will be first or second. Yeah. I think they're going to be second. To be honest with you, let's hope so. Eh? I think Leicester. Well, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> let's pray um, for for reasons that we won't explain. You look at those players that they bought on off the bench, and it's ridiculous. You know that Nonto guy that doesn't even. Nonto's want, amazing. He, uh, he, he, Great and the fact that he doesn't even want to be at Leeds, mm -hmm. and yet look at what he did. Yeah, he to came us, on and smashed right? it. Yeah. Somerville as well. You know, absolutely ridiculous. Um, I do. But, I do politely disagree with you, Rob, on Farker's proactive substitutions. He can do no wrong. He left it too late multiple times. He, he was, did. No, he and did. And he was far but too. He, he was far too stubborn in the Premier League. Agreed. Mod, and that was one of the reasons. Agreed. For the awful no, I'll take form. that point. But what I will say is, when he did get it right, he got it right. Absolutely. I don't remember. And forgive me if I'm wrong. Listening and put it in the comments if you can think of one. I can't remember Wagner really changing things. There probably is examples, but I don't remember that being a real strength for him. Yeah. No. I, it's I something agree where that. he can change yeah, again. Paul Lambert, going back a bit, was the master of that, mm. and that the absolute yeah, master. I agree. You know, he could change things and spot things. And that's down to Ian Culverass as well, of course. Yeah. It, 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 just on that, I mean, yeah, Leeds' squad, brilliant. Leicester, when we came up against them, brilliant. It, it feels as if that's an excuse, though, because, mm. you know, Plymouth yeah. weren't able to bring brilliant players off the bench. Coventry weren't. And we've been unpicked multiple times. Even if we look back to that Stoke win at home, I think we were lucky to kind of get through that. And there wasn't too much proactiveness to... Mm. Anyway, enough about that. Daniel Farker returned... I, I was really interested, Rob, to see one what the fan reaction would be like, and and the other, if Leeds were to win, which they did, how he would respond. I thought his, you know, we, we, we've been critical of Daniel Farker probably more than most, but I thought him at the end epitomised class. Yeah, he's a class bloke, you know. In, in terms, of, you know, from a football point of view, he never ever was was angry with us when we speak to him as media you know he was always polite he was always balanced he didn't cut cut up rough with us which we have had with managers not that it matters if they do we're not you know it doesn't matter to us if they shout at us but he was always you know on a on a level playing field with us so we we as as media people and reporters we've always had a lot of respect for Dan he's always nice to me um that's irrelevant really because he's bringing another team there but the way he built that rapport with the fans mm. is something that the club have lacked ever since. You know, you haven't had that. Dean Smith, lovely bloke. We all like Dean Smith. Great to talk to. Decent, you know, good football man is what you'd call him. Really great guy. Nice to us as, as media people. Nice to you guys as fans. Mm. Nice to any fans he met, but there just wasn't that rapport. No. Daniel had that more than lots of other Norwich managers. Mm. I think Paul Lambert's probably the one of all, I, I know it sounds a bit daft now because of where he went after, but for all the managers, I think he was the one that had that real kind of idolisation from yeah, the fans the aura, because yeah, they were yeah, like agreed. this guy is magic yeah. and he was and I remember working with him as in reporting with him and re interviewing him and speaking to him and I had the, it was like oh this yeah, is Paul yeah. Lambert this is special yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's got that and I think Daniel Farker went even further than that in that he you know fans just absolutely loved yeah. him and there's, there's, there's fans tweeting me and I, 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 won't, I can't name the person because I can't remember who it was who afterwards, I sort of put up a little video of him coming out and waving at the fans and one said, well, you know, people like you got him out calling for it. It's like, well, that's not true. And I want to say to that person, you, you can go back in all the archives of Radio Northwood. I never, ever said Daniel Farker should go. That's not what I will do. We However, did. <laughs> you did and you, you've owned that and that's fine. And you're entitled to that. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that's irrelevant. The bottom line is, yes, he had bad results, but that doesn't stop us respecting what he did yes, as a yes. brilliant manager for us. He gave us some great times. And... He is class. He's a class guy. He yeah. knows how to work it. I think that was that was very well worded, Rob. I, th I think you know, from a football respect, you know, you res you respect him, don't you? Um, what, what he did at, at Norwich City, and and I think you, you mentioned there, 
his connection with the fans. He was our first foreign manager. You know, that in itself is something special that Norwich fans will, will always forget. Still absolutely stand by um, what, what I said and how I said I wanted and when I wanted Daniel Farker to leave. Um, I stand by that. I think it, it was time to close the chapter. But that doesn't mean you can't that doesn't mean you can't now say what a class guy. Absolutely. I mean, this is what makes me laugh. Don't Absolutely. get me worked up, Chris, because I will. No, it just annoys up. me that people. It's like, well, you you said you wanted him going, which you guys did, yeah. and that's fair enough. But I still respect him. Exactly. Mate, so you can mate, have when both, we, mate. When when the club said enough's enough, and even before that, I literally created this massive, long, great, big thread on Twitter. Tell it, telling everyone about how much I respected what he did for the football yeah. club. Young players, first foreign manager, yeah. two championship titles. I can go on forever, but obviously still with with, him, think... with you know getting rid of him. But what I do want to say, and Jack raises it very well, I was so happy that he did the respectful thing yeah. after that game because he was within his rights to give it the big un. And he didn't. And for that, I have to give him a lot of praise and credit. As I say, from a football respect, I respect him. I think it it just proves, doesn't it, Rob, that being a football manager now is more than just winning games. Leeds craved for someone like Bielsa after he left. And I think Fark is not Bielsa, but in terms of getting someone like him, he can unite a fan base. And Leeds haven't been, I think they'll admit, haven't been great at times this season you know a, a, a really erratic start to the campaign but they're getting there now but they're getting there now and I think they always had a, a bigger belief under mm. Farker and I think and I think we've and he did try and nick that. Kenny McLean who was on the cheek so he did that's a, that's a reason to be angry with him shall we get on some Twitter questions there's so many there are right so the first question that we've got Jack and there's from, lots of them yeah there are so many uh, from NCFC Jake good afternoon good evening good morning whenever you're watching and listening to this he says, how long are you two, now three, going to give Wagner before you start to seriously question his future here? And honestly, I'd say 50% of these questions are about David Wagner. Should he, should he be sacked? Should he stay? You know, questions are being asked now because of the form. We'll obviously go to you first, Rob. Where, where, how do you feel about that question being slung at this point? Where does that sit with you, mate? It's, it's the, I think it's the right question because I think fans are entitled to say that. Um, I think it's it's such a weird time at Norwich City Football Club because you've got Ben Nappers coming in about a month away from now, a bit, bit longer than that. Stuart Webber's going to, by all accounts, kind of, I'm not going to say hang around because that sounds a bit flippant, but he's going to be there, which in many ways is good because he's gonna, not going to sort of bed him in, as it were, and look after him and he's showing where the post-it notes are and you know all that <laughs> kind of stuff, where the toilets are. So that's good. But you've got this situation where you're going to have Stuart Webber there, yeah. you're going to have Ben Napper there. Ben Napper might go, oh, I don't fancy him. I don't fancy him as our head coach. And Stuart's going to go, he's my mate. Yeah. You can't sack him. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm yeah. sure they'll be professional about it. And Stuart's going to say, well, actually, it's up to you because you're the boss now. But I'm not saying that Ben Napper's going to come in and instantly go, off you go. But between now and then, we've got Middlesbrough on Tuesday night. We've got Sunderland who are in the top six. Always tough going up yeah. there, of course it is. You've got games like right up until when he comes in, Watford away. You know, that's yeah. always a tricky place. Yeah. There's lots of other tough games coming. Blackburn at home, you know, it's always going to be a tough one. So there are some tough games coming. If Norwich lose the next two, and this leads into what I think your point is going to be, Jack, and your point as well, it's going to be difficult, isn't it, for, for a manager to justify his position. I think fans are going to ask that question. Uh, and it's not the week you want when you're a manager under pressure. I mean, you know, Borough... Five in a row, they've won. Borough hitting four. Um, Sunderland, as, as Rob alluded to, going really well. I think the... It was interesting. When, when Rob was last on the show, November 2022, I was looking back. Norwich were fifth. We were five points off Burnley at the time. And, uh, and, and even at that point, it was it was, you know... All we want Dean Smith out. Yeah. Well, Norwich haven't progressed in a year. They've gone backwards, and I know we there's been you know we have to sell good quality players. I actually think the recruitment hasn't been too bad, but in terms of management, I've seen absolutely no improvement um, from that side. I, you know, I think Dean Smith um, had positives. It was it, it, I think it was the style of football and that lack of rapport that eventually got him sacked. But if we're looking at them fairly if you're sacking Smith you've got to sack Wagner the the issue I think the issue you've got is who do you bring in and, I, and I've always been of the agreement well that's not our jobs so that's for someone on you know yeah, a bit more cash at the club so I don't think you can hold on to that 
I and I know every manager will have these issues. I think he has been unlucky with injuries this season mm-hmm. to lose your two best strikers at the club, and at that point we were going well. Yeah. Is a is a really kind of is a is a big gut punch for for Wagner. But if we are looking at it honestly, there hasn't been improvement. The last six weeks have been appalling, and I can't see how it gets mm. better. I really like this take from Julian Scott on uh, on X, and he said, "Problem is, Chris, beyond that starting eleven, Wagner evidently has a weak squad made worse by injury to key players, as you mentioned, Jack. When he needs to bring on fresh legs around sixty-five minutes, his substitutions inevitably weaken us. It's a catch twenty-two situation. Not completely his fault, but Delia's and Weber's too. I, I, so there is context to be had here. Um, I, I, I." I don't agree with that fully because as we spoke about earlier, Rob, I don't know if the squad is that weak. We've gone through the defence, all fairly solid. No, no, the starting 11 is fine. But beyond that, mate, you you can't change a game of football. But, okay, I mean, we all wanted Forshaw to start. He was on the bench. You've got Sines, who we wanted to start. He's on the bench. He's been injured, to be fair, but Um, yeah, he's back. I I think there's far worse squads in this division. I agree with that. And we've got a bigger budget. Yeah, you know, and we have got players that have been in the Premier League. You know, we've got players like Kenny, who you know he's been much criticised, but I think most people would agree he's an important player yeah, for us yeah. now. He's the captain. He's done well this season. You know, and, and you're right. The defence is a great example. But you know, the four of them are decent players, yeah. and yeah. include Gunny is five. But so this, together, they're just dreadful. Yeah, but 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 then this is the thing, Rob. I think I think I think we maybe are pointing the finger at David and I think it's maybe valid I think it is because as you, you say can... these players aren't bad players no. and I and you know what I, I talk nonsense right and I, spe- I spend as much of my time because of that asking people that actually are within the football industry what do you think about the mm. tactics the personnel the recruitment mm. and they've been critical and they've said mate Wagner should be getting more out of these players for, for me I think post Middlesbrough and Sunderland, if we lose both of those games, we are getting towards, if not already, at untenable territory. The, I really do, because the, the, the fans will turn. It's already on a knife edge. Um, I think that, let's say we you know, get four points, or amazing if we get six yeah. from the next two. The argument then, Rob, is, well, it's papering over the cracks. Well, and, then, and then it all it takes there, there is another that, defeat. But, and then, well, but there is that. But but the powers that be at Norwich City will go. Well, look, we're back in the top yeah. six. That's where of we course, want to be. Of course. So that's where you've got a problem. You have to look at it from a removed yeah. kind of point of view. And this is the never too high, never too low attitude. But this is where I feel pretty low at the moment. Yeah, I do. And <laughs> and also, I don't. You know, I don't think David Vargas is a bad manager at all. No. And I agree with you, Jack. I don't I think keep that. changing the manager is going to do any good. You know, we all laugh at Watford. I mean, we're not going to go that extreme. I just think the, the problem Norwich have got is it's a transitional period. Yes. This is such a transitional period. And but how long I don't, have we been transitioning I know. for? No, Agreed. I agree. <laughs> but, we, but we are in the longest time. transition of all time because <laughs> yes. we've got yes. we've got this situation I've already gone through with, with Weber yeah. and Napa, which yeah. I think is a bit strange, if I'm honest, because most jobs in football, and I've been covering football for a long time, you're lifelong football people, football fans, you get the manager goes or the sporting director goes, the new bloke or woman comes in, bang yeah. that's the end of it yeah. the other one goes and off you go but we've got this weird situation where Stuart and I think there's many positives to that but I also think there's some negatives we've also got this this Atanasio situation yes. which Higher I think up. we're all excited about we've heard from Mark we've, we've heard from Mike on this very podcast where they've, and Radio Norfolk where yeah. they've, but not Mike we haven't had Mike yet but anyway but they've spoken glowingly about how much they love the club already and they seem like really good people they're, 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 they're the kind of people you want in your football club and quite rightly, they're not going to just walk in and take over and, and it's going to be... That works in the boardroom, but you have got Delia and Michael who are going to be there for this best part of three years. Mm-hmm. That's a transition period. I just think we just perhaps need a fresh start and that's where we're going. Where are we going to go? Is it going to be kind of grey areas for the next two years? Do we really know who's in charge? Mm-hmm. Is it Anatanasio? Mm-hmm. Is it still Delia and Michael? Is it Stuart Webber? Is it Ben Napper? You just need to go, right, this is our plan and yeah. we're going to go for it full full play. We're not going to be half one thing and half the other. So what is a fresh start to you? A fresh start to me is letting Ben Napper be the boss. Okay. If Ben Napper is the sporting director and that's who they've picked, you say to him on November the 27th, I think that's the date, you're in charge, you make decisions, see you later. Okay. I'm on the phone if you need me. This is Stuart Webber. You've got my missus here as well. She'll, she's still the boss of, of the executive side of things. I'll see you later. I'm going to go and 
do what everyone's going to do, right? So that's what you do, and then Ben Napper can make his own decisions, and he can mm, that's your concern, keep the isn't manager, it? sack the manager, get a new manager. You know, I saw someone, I think that's coming up in the text later, someone mentioned Jack Wilshere, which I thought was incredible. I was like, where's that one come on? That's the first I'd heard of it. But I'm not advocating sacking the manager at all, but I want someone to run it. And if you've decided that Stuart Webb is going and and he's decided that, that's fine. Stuart's done, you know, in large parts, a great job getting us two titles, etc. with Daniels. Brought in some fantastic players for us as well. You know, Emmy and Timu being the two big ones. But if he's going, great. Let's let Ben Napper run it. Let's let him be the boss. Linked to what Rob said. Great points, by the way, mate. Bang on. Love the passion as always. You know me. I'm passionate. Passion merchant. Um, Matt Johnson. This is the most liked response. Well, I'm Matt. So he's, fa- a, he's a big wrestling fan, Matt. Fans so. want a response to There's this. And of Matt. course, we'll go to our special guest on this. Stu- Has Stuart Webber left Norwich City in a better place than he found it? There were certainly high points, but I'd argue we are substantially wor- in a worse footballing place when he arrived and current sorry then when he arrived and currently only heading in one direction are we in a better place Rob than when yes. Weber took over yes we are because he has sorted out lots of stuff behind the scenes the training ground is, is completely different I think that was really important in terms of league position no we're still a mid-table championship and that team. is what really absolutely all fans will care about. they don't absolutely. care if they've got a swimming pool absolutely at the but he would argue fans. that having the swimming pool having the great gym which they have got we got a tour from the yeah. man himself back Lovely in the gym. day the vegetable patch etc <laughs> that's the sort of thing that brings players in and the soccer bot don't the soccer bot which which we saw Abu Kamara had a go at that was great um, he's, he's doing alright the, the vegetable patch will bring the vegetable patch the butternut squash all that but <laughs> joking aside you, you know, Gabby Sarah comes to our football club. And that's a lovely radish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And he's thinking, you know, I, I love a bit of radish. I love a bit of leek, whatever. <laughs> but all joking aside, Gabby comes to our training ground. Clearly yeah. had the pick wowed. of a few European clubs. I don't know about wowed, but I think he thinks, <laughs> it's all right, this. Why wouldn't he be wowed? Well, uh, yeah, it's you a training ground, this, isn't No, 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 no. No, you gave this his way. You need to put more, both of you need to put more respect on that training ground. On the vegetable patch. No, not the vegetable patch. <laughs> The training ground. I, hang on, I just brought it up, mate. No, I know, but you're saying, oh, yeah, but it doesn't really matter that much, and it isn't no, that good. No, the question was, has he made has it things yeah. better? Is it better? Yes. Infrastructurally, yes. yes. Because of the training okay. ground. Not on the pitch. And Jack quite rightly said, Sarah we're not teaming up on you know, by now, by the way, but Jack point. quite rightly said that football fans don't worry about vegetable patches. Of course, of course, of course. It's like me saying, and this is one of my things, it's like when people, I, I really hate this. I really oh. hate this. <laughs> I'm going to get it out there, yeah. right? You're Sorry right. if this offends anyone, but I really hate it when football fans get excited about transfer fees. <laughs> oh, we're going to get 10 million for X, Y, Z. What? You don't get a cut of it. You know, this isn't, this yeah, isn't a cooperative. Thing, people, all people Who cares? Care about, it's yeah, not but, football manager. Yeah, yeah. You don't get nothing for it. I'd ra- I want Gabriel Sarra to stay here till he's, 43 yeah. he'll still be decent then yeah. I don't want him to go and if we get 38 million for him that's not my money I want the best players to stay at this football club but this is the XG Tacticos world that, that we live in it's like, oh, link good, to we'll that, get a Rob. sell on clause from Addison like, link to that Madison. link to that I'm going to throw another one at you Rob from oh, Finley yeah. H who says drink. rave only one rave from that game and that has to be Gabriel Sara too good for us I'm afraid Jack yeah I think we might be, well, I certainly think if our form continues, we're going to struggle to keep that man in January. Well, uh, uh, there was a question here from from good friend of the channel, oh, right, Craig Killer, who said, can't be bothered to moan, so let's just enjoy Sarah. Yeah, well, point. I'm in a, in, in a real pessimist, you know, pessimist mood with you? Norris pessimist City at the moment. And actually, I'm seeing this as a negative. I'm thinking, well, he's gone in January and then we've got no <laughs> hope. Yeah. Well, we'll there still is have that. Johnny Wright. I mean, uh, Sarah, uh, will we though? Oh, He's God. been linked with Sarah, him now. Yeah, Wolves yeah. were linked with him 15 yeah, million. I've, I've heard that's not true, but still. Yeah. You know, we, we, we've discussed Weber at, at length. Sarah was clearly a, a very shrewd bit of business. Excellent. Um, Credit to Weber for that. And I think and I think he's been brilliant. I, you know, his numbers are incredible. The goal against Leeds was actually far better watching it back on the highlights. I thought they beat sort of three or four players. Um, so he's, he's certainly a bright spark. You've mentioned Rowe, but again, this is me going, the squad's not too bad. The fence is good. You've got the championship's best midfielder in Gabriel Sara, and he is. Yep. You've got Jonathan Rowe, one of England's top young talents. Yep. And he's going to cost you a grand. Yes. And um, so I'm going, well, actually, the, 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 the squad's quite good. Yeah. That's what's frustrating me. 
Do we keep Sarah in January? I think it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be tough, tough to keep Johnny Rowe. I really do. <sighs> I don't, don't think that. either. If we lose this man, oh my no, god! No, I, I think, know, yeah, but, I but both of them don't want to go. I don't think uh, no no noise is coming from their camps no. to say they want to go. But it's not. It's the Norwich way, isn't it? I think we have if, to sell. I think if you're Rowe, I'm more confident we keep Rowe. He's guaranteed game time. I'm not sure he's quite at the level to be a regular starter. But can in the we Premier afford League not to sell yet. him, Jack? Well, mm. yeah, there is that. And that's not a I question for us, really. Fees, no, but it, it, it's the point. No. What is the point of watching football? You know, I look. I'm different. I'm I'm 44 years old, right? I'm from a different really? generation. Wow. To you. I could look good in it. I know, well but done. yeah, I've got to dye my beard and all that business soon. But I will do it. Listen, I've got. I've <laughs> been around a lot longer than you boys watching this football club. Yeah. And Norwich have always been a selling club. That's the way it is. But when I was a kid, was I happy when Robert Fleck went? No, no. I was devastated. Yeah. I pretty much nearly cried. I was doing a paper round. I read it in the EDP. That's how we found out stuff without actually reading the paper. Your like, Robert Fleck's a bit better than mine, Malky McCarthy. Yeah, but Ma- Malky was one. a top player. Well, there you go. But that's a good example. Malky was a top I know, player I know, for us. I know, I know, you know, know. Flecky, Darren Eady, when he went, you know, and I know Darren will we'll probably be watching. He knows how much I think of him as a person and as a footballer. Yeah. One of my favourite ever people in the world. When he went, I was absolutely, fu- I was absolutely fuming. Mm. I was crying. I was upset. That's how we're used to that, but it doesn't mean. But now football fans have been kind of conditioned to go, oh, I've got nine million. That's good yeah. business. It's like no losing good players is not good yeah. business. Yeah. So you yeah. need to get to a position. And to be fair to Farker, he always used to say this in his presses. I'm sorry to bring him up again. He always used to say we want to get in a position where we don't have to sell our best yeah, players. Yeah. And Stuart Webber said that as yeah. well. So where is where where is the plan to get there? Mm. I've got a really important point to bring up and. I've seen lots of people post this afterwards, and I actually do agree with it. Rant. This is from Finley H again, he's on fire this week. He says, I'm actually a bit fed up with some fans who are angry with how we play. It's obvious that we start at the back and wait for the press so we can counter. And I think it worked for most of the game. I think booing or putting pressure on the players doesn't help. And and we, we actually saw, I think it was Duffy, had to tell the fans to sort of, you know, calm down at one point. And I have to agree, um, I know that, Rob, you'll never say anything wrong about about the fans, but for me, that one there is a bit of a stinker. Like, come on, guys, you know, we, we know what we're trying to achieve here. And don't get me wrong, it's not good for our heart health, including mine. I'm moaning in the stands a little bit, but you, you can at least understand the reason why, can't you? I think, well... Rob, you were at Coventry. I thought we were shambolic that day. It was just really, really dull. Really lucky to get a draw. Really dull. And, and we were trying to play this kind of invite the press on. And yeah. Coventry were like, well, actually, you just have it. We don't okay. want it. Yeah. I thought it was a bit better against Leeds. It's all well and good saying, it's fine when you've got the ball, mm-hmm. but we're so out of shape when we when we give up possession. And, and they just picked mm. us open. So, yeah, part of it worked. At the end of the day, Chris, I think fans are justified to be annoyed. I, I didn't come away from there going, oh, you know, it nearly worked. And I like when Gibson invited on Somerville to... <laughs> I, I was going, well, we've lost the game 3-2. But and yeah, we've, and no, we've no, now no, lost five no, of the last no, seven no, games. I know, I know that. But with the team that we've got, surely you can't criticise that idea. Part, I think... part of it worked, but we lost the game. That's fair enough. No, that's fair enough. Is that, and, is and, that and, where and, you're at? And unfortunately... <laughs> uh, unfortunately no, that's totally right. We're, we're in a position now where we can't be patient about this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. But you can't... I do, look, I understand. I'm not a, I am not a dinosaur, despite being 44. I do understand football. I've played football to a very poor level. <laughs> I know you boys have as well. Probably a little bit higher than me. You know, I've watched football all my life. I'm obsessed by football. I think that's obvious that I'm a football reporter. I understand that way of playing. I understand yeah. you're inviting the, the pressure. You are trying to keep the ball. If you don't keep the ball... It's game over. Yeah. If you give the ball back to the opposition, it's game over. So it's, 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 you've got to keep the ball. If, you, yes. if you're fannying it about with it at the back and then you give it away or you pass it out for a throw in, you've lost possession. So you've totally and utterly ruined what you're trying to do. Yeah. So what's the point of doing it if it's not going to work? Yeah, but Rob, you do, you've got more of a chance of keeping the ball. I understand. I understand. If you see Man City and Liverpool do it and Spurs and teams like that, you know, that's completely different yeah. because you know with, with, with Spurs, you've got the legend that is James Madison there to, to finally get mm. it to, then something happens and you get a chance. You've got Son running onto things. Norwich just aren't good enough to play that game for 95 minutes, 98 minutes. Mm, They're not good enough. They've got to flip it up a bit. Let us know in the comments on YouTube, if you're watching Or in Canary Call. Yeah, or in Canary Call, and tell us 
What do you think about playing it out from the back? I personally think we should stick at it. Well, I really do. Uh, well, I, I mean, how long? How you know? We've talked about our nine-year transition. How long do you stick at it? <laughs> well, because look, actually, just... we've, we've we've talked about it already. A year, <laughs> and there's been no progress. So it's, should we give it till the end of the season? It's just the it least. The end of the decade, I'd say. The... <laughs> <laughs> I just think that is the least of our worries, in my opinion. This though but, has got but me worried. But you can't. You can't. I'm not going to slate the fans ever. So if the fans are, are digi, which is a, a lovely word that I love to use. What does digi? that mean? Digi? Digi. Like, oh, a bit digi, you know. A digi do. Yeah, yeah, no, no, like a bit digi, you know. Oh, I like oh, that. A bit digi. Yeah. You can have that one. Nice education. So, yeah, you. so if is the that fans are a bit digi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in Football Factory. Have you seen it? Oh, OK. Yeah, Danny Dyer. That's before yeah. time. Classic. No, it's not. Joking, joking. Have you ever seen Football <laughs> yes, Factory? Yes, of course I, I have. I love that film so much. Brilliant. I know it's a bit, it's a bit Brexit, but I do like that film. You know, it's just brilliant. Anyway, um, digi. The fans are getting digi. You can't, you can't blame them. You can't expect no, no, human no. beings to just go, everything's fine, I'm all right, I'm just going to sit here and fold my arms and clap yeah. politely. That's not going to happen. Here's Football what I'm getting. got their rights. Mm. Here's what I'm getting digi about. <laughs> Chris Reynolds says, do you agree that it was a good performance against Leeds? Is David Wagner missing the point that points mean prizes? I must admit, I am getting concerned at some of the post-match stuff. Like, I know some of it can be forgiven. Like, I always have this rule. I try my very best not to post half an hour after the final whistle because I know I'm emotional and I'll say something stupid that I shouldn't do. That's the best time, mate. Um, Well, for you, yeah. Yeah. But but anyway, my point is, David Wagner's coming up with some interesting, I'll say, things post-match. I don't think you can class a good performance as one where you concede three goals at home after being two well, up at 60 minutes. Look, and I think Leeds had 19 shots on goal. Did they? Four of those in the first half should have been goals. Yeah. We yeah, could have I quite agree. easily gone into half-time 4-2 You'd call down. them unlucky in the first half. And, and you wouldn't yeah. then say, well, this has been a good performance. Yeah. Because it's not sustainable and there's, there hasn't been progression. It's so you what, agree what, that that's absolutely poppycock? Well, it wasn't a good performance. We lost the game. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. It's Don't not argue good, I'm agreeing with you. Perform- it's not a good performance right. if you We're lose, all agree, right? And, uh, and it's not a good performance if you tune it up at half-time and you lose. That's, that yeah, makes it no, worse. It's not a good performance if you tune it up after one hour and you still lose. And, and, this is concerning, isn't and, it? And, and I think you, can, you could probably get away with saying it was an okay performance if you'd won, you know, three in or the last four. if we'd have drawn 2-2 two, two and held on. I mean, it would have been all right, we got a point against a good team. But, you know, we're in a, we're in a really dire situation now. Yes, we are. It does feel like Norwich are on the slide and the players and the, the hierarchy and the, the head coach at Norwich won't say that. They wouldn't admit to that because that's defeatist attitude. But we're not players. We're not management. Yeah, we don't yeah. work for the we're club. Be we're fans. Yeah, yeah, and we're reporters and what have you. So we can say that because yeah. it feels like that. Mm. Yeah, We can sense it, can't we? Richard Thompson says, 2017, we were an average championship club in debt. 2023, we're an average championship club in debt. I may be naive, but why the handover between Weber and Napa? We you don't want the new regime doing the same as the previous. Same with owners taking too long. Just get it done. It does feel, Rob, and we, and we mentioned it on the last podcast. Under when Weber first came in and under Farker, there was a clear ideology about the way we played, the way we operate, the way we recruit. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. But we knew what we were about. It does feel as if we're confused about the way we play, who we recruit. Are we going? Are we, you know, progressing youth, or are we signing, you know, experience? what's the ownership model and I think that's the thing isn't it it's confusion both at board level and amongst the fans Weber's gone back to, to what he knows because you know he's got a manager in that he knows and he obviously knew Daniel um, you know I, I, I hadn't worked together before but he obviously knew him because it was a name that was used to us all like who's this guy yeah. he came in etc the rest is history um, Wagner's someone he knows he's worked with him he did buy experienced players they did bring a few experienced players right at the start of Daniel Farker's time you know he did because yeah, they were yeah. players like no, I'm you know, trying to think the, like Marcel yeah. Franca yeah exactly oh, like, yeah. but they were German lots of them yeah, were yeah. German players but they were experienced yeah. they were players I mean Zimbo was was a, Zimbo, was a, yeah. and who was yeah. the, you would say was a great player for Norwich all of in course, all yeah. and a leader and a great guy you know and he brought in you know players that had been at clubs and, and done well and played in the Champions League you know uh, Mo Leitner and people like that Tom Tribal your your good friend you know he, he was someone who played at the top level but they're all experienced players you know not necessarily young mm. but he also blooded young players Max Aarons being the one that was the complete success throw him in against Ipswich the rest is history you know we all know what a great player Max has been so Stuart Webber's gone back to what he knows which is by getting Wagner getting in experienced players 
you know, Huang's an experienced player. That's why they signed him, you know, and he's he's not lit any fires by any stretch of imagination. So clearly that's the plan, but it's not working. Mm. And I, I echo that that person who who's no, that? Who said that's a question, one. No. Whoever it was, thank you for that message. Because Richard, I think. It, it Richard, was. thanks, Richard. He is spot on. It's yeah, just I mean, this 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 kind of grey area we've got now. But that's because everything is confused from to, and and everything comes top down, right? So if it's confused and not solid and not clear at the top, it's going to be that when it goes on the pitch. And that is we are playing how we are just, throughout ju- the football. Just club. quickly before you get on to your next question, yeah. um, Chris. Um, Harv says, what's more worrying, Rob, is the anger is gone from fans. It's now acceptance mm. and apathy. apathy. And I do sense that. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't say there was... I don't think it's as bad as last time that word was used under Smith, though. I, I don't think we're apathy yet. I think we're still in the anger because we can see this team can do it because we had a good start to yeah, the season we and we're, we're, we're royally pissed off that you-know-who are above us and smashing that's it. A, that's a great that point. That doesn't that's help. A great point. We're not apathetic, Norwich City fans. I feel, ap- I feel apathetic. Yeah, but you've all, yeah, but that's just you. <laughs> I'm still angry because I can see in this team a Kenny McLean, it's Scottish international football international footballer, Johnny Rowe having a breakthrough season, setting the you world just said the by storm. Was average. Gabriel Sarra. All I'm saying is this. T- like we, we're angry. We're not apathetic. You're confused as well. No, I'm angry. I'm not apathetic. Do you sense that on the on the phone lines, Rob? I think is there's, there's, there's the mood shifting. Right, I'll tell weeks. you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. On Saturday, we were really busy, and that indicates anger. Okay. Because after Stoke, which we won one nil, yeah, we didn't get many calls. Oh, I'll be okay. honest with you. And we had a one nil in Stoke against Stoke in the Premier League years ago yep. when I was doing it in Macca, and, and that was another thing. Maybe it's just Stoke, but <laughs> Plymouth couldn't get enough calls on. We're literally yeah. limiting people. But to when you were answering, and they were on, what what was the mood? The mood is, I think it's anger. I, I really do. do think it's anger. I get what the, the person's saying there. I think there is apathy, but I think the general. I don't think it's anger of we're going to boom, we're going to throw things and all that business at Caro. I think it's just. Sort this out. Yeah, we've shown yeah, yeah. this season. Yeah. I mean, we've we've our goal difference is I think it's now plus one. You know, it was it was magnificent right at the start of the season because we were smashing, we were top for winning. A while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've now you know we've, we're one of the top scorers in the division. We're one of the worst defenses. I think we are equally the worst defense with mm-hmm. with some Rotherham or whatever in the bottom three. Bottom three yeah, bottom so four, you, yeah. you just look at that and you think, well, where are we? Who are we? And I think this is a difficult thing because we've got to fill hours and hours of. Podcasts and radio and all that talking about it. so the pink and boys we've all got we've all got to talk about it but it's difficult to really put our fingers on it yeah. what what where are we and you know I don't expect the club to come out and say anything because there's, why should they they're just getting on with their games but it's a funny position we're in and we've been here so much in the last few months we really have let's lighten the tone street brawl who's winning Duffy Slabhead or Gibbo who's Slabhead. Who's Grant Hanley, obviously. Yeah. Well, Rob's in a good position to answer this because he's yeah, clearly I can into ref football. It. This would be a Hooligan triple threat, would it? That, very good point. So, yeah. Shane Great Duffy, ball. Grant Hanley, Ben Gibson. Can I just say before I do that that I want to see as many Norwich fans at Fightmare yes. as I, as I, yes, as I can. That. I want to see as many Norwich shirts. Um, I'll give you the date a little bit later on, but I want to see as many Norwich shirts Can we plug there. a link? Have you got a link? Yeah, I can give you a yeah. link. Yeah, so we want to see as many people there as possible. Support WAW, great local wrestling company. I'm the host. Yeah, I was going to say. Oh, wait, I've refereed, I've wrestled, I'm now hosting. Yeah. So there you we smash go. Smash Grant. Thanks for, for Rowdy Ricky Knight for asking me. I beat him last last year. At what's Fight what's Man. the what's the next thing? You've, you've ticked all the wrestling boxes now, haven't you? Yeah, I've you've ref, I've commentated, I've, I've, I've made a documentary about it. BBC Three available on iPlayer. Step into the ring. Yeah, so I you know, what else next. can I do? He's yeah, I'll just run my own out. company. Yeah, I'll, I'll join in with, and I'll have to join with Ricky Knight. Or streaker, you could be a streaker. No, no oh, streaker's at wrestling. So here we go, right? No, come so on, three-way. Ball. Duffy, um, three-way. three-way. Yeah. Goodness gracious, it's that's what you out. call it—a three-way dance, <laughs> wrestling, triple threat. Right, street ball. Who's winning? Duffy, Slabhead, Hanley. That's rude to call Grant Hanley that. No, so that's a compliment. He's got. Oh, it's a. It's no, it's good. Isn't that what they call Maguire as well? So. Snap yeah, but Hammy's yeah. better yeah. than him, yeah. yeah. Um, and Gibson. Uh, I will go for... Um, I'll go Duffy yeah. on that one. I think that's an easy one. No way. I think... Did you... Uh, Hang on, is this pre-Grant thing... Hanley injury or... Well, yeah, if he's post. injured, you can't have him. He no, can't wrestle uh, The thing injured. I enjoyed most about the Duffy goal at the weekend was the celebration. We, we, we saw the return of the Tim Close corner flag punch. Oh, yeah, good. Where, you, where he was so... You know, happy with what he'd just yeah. done. Happy, he, I'd say he was angry. He lost his mind and he just yeah. hit the corner flag. I, I appreciate well, it. Duffy would give him a good match, but for me, Grant Hanley is an absolute mammal. 
like he's just a big hairy beast and he's massive and I I don't have you I seen Duffy he's I, huge I don't know yeah, I, I, I think I think Grant Hanley would, would, would outdo him definitely okay um, good question yeah great question great question Ollie says and, and Rob we, I know you, you watch the podcast every week but we get a lot of these saying yeah Jack may, maybe was right after all he said concerning statement maybe Jack Reeve TNC's relegation prediction Gosh, had been right all that. along actually Ollie's um, spreading some fake news that I didn't say we'd be relegated I said we'd finish about mid-table and I think actually you said we'd be around the relegation but, but zone the, the problem is, well, is you've got the last six we are aren't yeah we? That's that's kind of where we expected. Yeah. So is it? I mean, should we be getting that upset? Right. I need to talk about this. Right. This is boiling my piss. This word. Right. Ex- expectancy, expectation, and everyone's beating each other up with it. Oh, you know, it's just where we are. It's just where no, we but are. No, but I don't, no, it's no, just no, where no. we expect no, to no, be. No, no, no. I'm not oh, saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying at the start of the season, if someone said to you, "Where do you think Norwich will finish?" You'd said mid table. No, he yeah? wouldn't because he's deluded. All right. Well, Jack, you're sensible. You'd 12th. Have said twelfth. Yeah. Right. So now we are gonna we are twelve. Effectively, we're tenth, but we're twelfth, right? Yeah. Let's let's say it's mid table, right? So Jack, I'll ask him because he's 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 the one who said we'll be twelve. Are you you're not surprised? No. You're not shocked, but you're upset because you've seen Norwich play well this season. Is that right? Yeah, but I think you know we've got a big enough sample size now where everything you know the dust has settled. We yeah. are. We've done where your we 10 do. games. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we are where we deserve to be. And we're falling over in October. My point is, I'm not disagreeing with you, boss. I'm just, I linked, I just got the word and I've I linked called it. Boss? Yeah, he called because he boss, is my yeah. boss. Well, that's good though. Yeah. Actually, maybe I should be calling yeah, him. Yeah, he's the one who, you would be, you'd be nothing without him. That's weird, isn't it? I call you my <laughs> boss, but I don't call you my boss. Yeah, that's interesting. He is your boss. You call yeah. me some horrible things. Some interesting yeah. levels of respect, I think. Yeah. And yeah. Because I'm old. I just, I'm just fed up of this small, little old Norwich mentality of, Oh yeah, it's alright. We're just Norwich, aren't we? Yeah, well, we're just transitioning. Or yeah, it's alright. No, 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 it's not. It's not fucking good enough. It's not. Oh. It frust- it frustrates me so much. This club have been in the Premier League recently twice and blown it. Right? There is no way with even the starting eleven we've debated around the squad that we should be where we are and losing games in the manner that we are. You, this whole, oh, it doesn't matter, yeah. don't worry about it. And people are just like, oh, I prefer the championship. No, oh, no, oh, no, my no, God, don't start me. No, I just I think, that. I actually you sound think like me. Norwich fans need to raise, oh, oh, no, in you which do. case I'm worried. No, but you do, because this, <laughs> but we need to you're, raise we're our making expectations. the same points, Jack. We're, uh, Chris, I'm just confused now. <laughs> we're making the same, edit that. We're making the same point, Chris. I agree. Norwich should be in the Premier League. This football, this brilliant yeah. football, all these brilliant shirts, Wes Hula and all these great Crofty, yeah. legend, Lee Croft. We should be in the Premier League. This football club has got so much history. What Jack and I are talking about, and I won't speak for him, but I think he'll agree, is the team we've got and the manager we've got and the setup we've got and the recruitment we've got at the minute, we're a mid-table championship I team. Know. In the grand scheme of things, of course Norwich should be in the Premier I just League. Don't they're, want, they're a Premier League I just, club. I just don't agree with the small group of supporters that are just like, well, yeah, that's just what it is. Yeah, we'll but just it's true. It. But that is true. Yeah, but yeah, but that's where fight. we are. We ain't good enough. Fight. Where's your desire? Because they on. are. We can't do it. We can only as as yeah. Let's no. talk as the supporters. We can only do what we can do, which is turn up, get behind the team, which they have done, and demand Despite more. criticism from the powers that be on numerous occasions about how bad our fan base is, the Norwich fans, and I'm not just saying this. I'm, I'm doing my deal here at half time here. They are. Some of the best fans in the world, I know and, that, I know, and I'm not just saying that because I am one, and you two are, but we genuinely are. We come from far out in the east of England. We're going all over the place. There was hundreds and thousands there at Plymouth. Yeah. They didn't deserve that, and every I club would say that. they've got great fans. And let's be honest, most clubs have, but Norwich fans are particularly not special Reading. for me. Not Reading, Reading. No, don't. Let's not, Reading let's not. get in. I love Reading. If you're if you're a Reading fan, don't look <laughs> after me when I come. You. Well, well, we're not, we don't play in league. league. We don't play league one teams uh, uh, yet, so don't worry. Uh, have you got? A, I'll give you one more question. You can read out. No, go on. No, that's fine. You done? Are you, you actually want me to? No, no, no. Okay, not a few. I think. <laughs> look, we've got a, a big week coming up. People may be watching this before the, the Borough game or not. Let's say in a month's time, Rob. Where do where do you expect this football club to be? Obviously, Napa would have just come in, or will about yeah, to just come about in. To, yeah. Do you think? Wagner's still here. Do you think the the, the form has turned in, in a month's time? I think I think he will be here because I think Norwich will win just to keep it bubbling. I think we'll hover around eighth, ninth, yeah. maybe jump jump into sixth every so often. So I think you know I don't think I, I just don't think 
I think Wagner's not really the one to look at. I think it's just the bigger picture at yeah. Norwich at the minute. Mm. Where are we? Who are we? You know, we've got a, we've got an AGM coming up where questions will be asked, of, of quite rightly, by the shareholders. And you know, it's interesting. We don't have any intel that we're going to hear from Ben Napper anytime soon. I'd love to hear from him, hear what he's going to say. Mm. Um, and I just, I just, I just, the, the overriding thing for me is I can see why Stuart Webber is going to hang around and look after him. I think that's a really good plan. That would work well in the business world. But I think in football, you need fresh starts mm. because, like mm. I said, you never would have a situation where the previous manager is hanging around yeah, or yeah. you buy a new striker and, you know, the one you've sold is still like, I'll just come in and <laughs> bed you in, you know. You do get situations where, you know, Ricky Van Walswicker comes in and Grant Holt's still there. Mm. And, you know... We know how that ended. Yeah, there's like some that, good stories like. around that, actually, yeah, that I'll tell you like, another yeah. time. But, you know, we all knew Holt was a better footballer than Ricky and he, he proved it and, and that was a mistake. So there's an example of where having the legend hanging over the, the new boy who's coming for a lot of money doesn't work. Mm. So I, I'm not saying where they should go now. I'm just saying that this is where I think there's a lot of unsettling from the fans. Yeah. David we Wagner, clarity. We yeah, clarity. we need clarity. But David Wagner would say, "Don't affect me. Just leave me to the training ground." That's that's behind the scenes mm. stuff. But I think it's a really interesting time for Norwich. We're going to be along for the ride. Um, but I think Norwich fans deserve better. I really do. I agree. And what I would say though, Rob, which is my last point, Jack. I know you want to finish up. Is I think it does affect David, and I think David Wagner is potentially going to end up as the full guy. And it's easy to just say, well, manager, get him gone. And don't get me wrong, the resu- next time we do our podcasts, you know, if there's a couple of losses, you know, if the situation might have changed. But I, 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 do, I do, there's an element of me where I feel, I feel sorry for David Wagner because yeah, he's got Good the bike. ownership hanging over him. And the board thing hanging over him, and, he gets, and a mishmash and he squad with injuries. The media twice a week and, as well. and he's the one that gets. Yeah, exactly. That's don't. a joy, Rob. Well, well it's, not. Yeah, it depends. It depends who's doing it, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting thing. All I would say to the to oh, Norwich uh, fans. Uh, go on. Let, one all one I'm going to say to the Norwich fans watching this is show. keep doing your job because we're the Norwich fans are doing their job this season. You two have sort of merged into a married couple since oh, yeah. I last saw you. I love him. I love you as well, mate. I got divorced to you. I've got to say this one more thing. Um, uh, football wise Daniel Farkas still smells great Chris Gorham oh does he same same after show I believe so I had a bottle of that I think every Norwich fan's had it it's not cheap I'll tell you what is, I don't know what is it, is it sort of an in, in secret it's a big it. expensive one okay. I'll tell you okay. after but yeah he, he okay. still smelled good um, that was confirmed to me by Chris Gorham I, I wanted to go and have a sniff but I was up <laughs> in the gantry um, and fight Mary's November the 18th where come to fight, Mayor? We've got some great matches. Roy Roy Knight against Ricky Knight Jr. is the main event. It's going to be cracking. PJ Knight's in action as well against Brett Semtex. Wear listen. Wear a Norwich shirt. I'm the MC, and I will call you out and say how amazing you are if you if you wear a Norwich shirt. So that means everyone won't probably. But yeah, come along and wear a Norwich shirt. And don't forget, as well as tuning into the Talk Norwich City podcast, listen to the scrimmage every Monday yeah, yeah. live at six o'clock. And you can watch it back, listen to it back, sorry, on a podcast. Yeah. I'm not going to listen to I'm it like until you call me boss. I'm like merging all sorts now. Boss. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, please don't go go and try and sniff Daniel Farker. There might be issues if you do. Rob's allowed because mm-hmm. he knows him. Yeah, I do know him. I had a, I, I've got a lovely picture, I'll show you after, of me and Daniel arm in arm at um, Villa. He did. I did a oh, selfie with him. I've only ever taken you. You're absolute buggers for selfies, you two. But I've only ever done two you're selfies. You're old now. Yeah, you, you were going. No, no, well. I don't. I don't mind selfies in, as a principle. I'm just saying as a football thing. Right. Like the the you know the good old Moose on Talksport. <laughs> he loves a selfie, doesn't he? I've only done it twice. One was Nathan Redmond at Wembley. Yeah. yeah. And the other one was Farker at Villa. So. Never with Bradley Johnson. Never. No, he had a famous picture. With I Brad thought you got one when you. Yeah, but that wasn't a selfie. No, 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 no. The, when he did the commentary with you. Yeah, yeah, but that wasn't a selfie. That was just Chris took it, <laughs> and he put his arm around me. So I've, I saw. I've never washed that shoulder, shoulder since. since. Uh, Rob, great to see you. Hopefully, Top in man, a, a for year we'll um, thanks, yeah. boss. See you in a year. We'll yeah. Who knows where we'll <laughs> and be? And thanks for everyone who's got in touch. And these lads, by the way, amazing. This is this is the best podcast apart from one other. This is the best podcast on the Norwich City world. There's only two. I wanna, I wanna, there is. Well, there's more than two. I want to applaud these two, and I want to give them a round of applause for the great work they've done. Because you know, Jack started this all up, and and has has just blown everyone out of out of the proportion, oh. out of the world, out of the water with how well he's done. So credit to you, and I suppose I'll give you credit. Invoice as well. in the post. Thanks, yeah. boss. Great stuff. <laughs>